am so excited to have you joining me for this mosaic cardigan. It's really, really fun to do, and it's a simple construction. We're going to jump right in and talk about the supplies. I use the Mary Maxim Natural Alpaca for this. I like the softness as well as that tweed is really nice. I'm using Sand Dune and also the color Blue Stone for the one I'll be doing on camera. The first one I made was in this lighter um, cream color with this turquoise blue. I think it's absolutely gorgeous and really, really fun to do. You will also want to have a measuring tape on hand because whenever we are making crochet garments, it's important to not only do a gauge swatch and then check your gauge, it's important to check your gauge as you go every five to 15 rows to make sure we're not tightening up. Sometimes when we crochet in different segments because there's no way we can make this in one night, we might loosen or tighten our tension. And if we're checking with our measuring tape to make sure we can make those adjustments to have this fit just right. You will also need a size 4.5 millimeter as well as a four millimeter hook for the ribbing on the arms. Um, stitch markers are always nice to have for every project, scissors, and then a yarn needle to weave in those ends. So now we're gonna go ahead and get started by talking about the construction. Now the construction of this pattern is created flat for a beginner. The very first time I made this in this one, I ended up doing it to where I made the whole thing flat and I seamed down the sides of the mosaic. I don't like that as much. So we're gonna do a smarter construction for this pattern and what you'll see on camera. So this will actually start, the whole thing will still be done flat, but we're going to start by working the back panel above, starting above the mosaic. So we're not doing the mosaic pattern until very last when we're come, we talk about coming to do this body. We're going to start and do this section first. So we're just gonna be working the top part of this cardigan in these half double crochet stitches flat. We'll do just this section, then we'll add some stitches to do the arms, and then we'll roll over here to the front panels. And once we have those front panels on, we are going to do our seaming before we start this mosaic section. That way the mosaic section is done in one chunk, which is much easier when you're doing your color work and it will look much better on the sides and then we'll finish off with this ribbing. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started with our main color doing this back section first. Now to start this back panel that will start above the mosaic. So we're ignoring the mosaic section at this point and we're just creating this back panel in the half double crochet stitches. We will start by doing a slip knot and placing that onto our hook. And then we are going to chain 80 for the size small. Now, once we have 80 chains, we are going to start in the very first chain from the hook with a stack single crochet. And to do this, we are going to enter that very first chain stitch. I like to enter it on the bottom hump. And then we will yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through both of the loops on the hook, but we're not done. We're going to go back into this left bar here and insert our hook, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through both of the loops on the hook. And then you can go ahead and mark this first stitch of the row because it's very easy to work around the side of it, which we don't want to do. So we're going to mark our first stitch. And then in the remaining chains across this row, we are simply going to be half double crocheting. And we're going to work that half double crochet stitch in rows. So we're going to work it all the way to the end of the row, turn, do a stack single crochet, half double crochet in the rest, and we'll do this for a total of 12 rows. Unless you would like this to be longer or shorter, which means you'll do more or less rows. So I'm simply going to be working the half double crochet stitch for 12 rows. So now I have my 12 rows of 80 stitches for the size small. I'm turning at the end of this row, and now it is time for us to add on some stitches for our arms. It's best or easiest to grab a second ball of yarn, or you can use the other end of the ball that you're working on. And we're going to use a strand of this to chain on this side. We're going to be chaining 64 stitches on this side, and then we'll be doing the same over here, and then we'll work across them all. So I'm gonna start by just letting this side sit and grabbing a new thing of yarn. Now I'm simply going to start in the far left stitch and we are going to be chaining 64. So now after we have chained 64, we can grab our scissors and we can fasten off these chains and then we'll go back to the other side. So these chains are just a way 
for us to set up our stitches for this side when we're adding arms to both sides and working across everything. I'm gonna pull my yarn through, but make sure that you don't pull too tight because that last one is a stitch. And if we pull too tight, we might not be able to see it. So I'm gonna let my chain sit there. And then on this side, we are going to, once again, chain 64. So now our total stitches are 208 when we're counting the chains, working across the back and then the other chains. So we'll go ahead and start in the very first chain from the hook with a stacked single crochet. And you can mark that if you need to. And then we are simply going to half double crochet across all these stitches, all the chains, across the back body, and all the other chains. And now after working across all these stitches, across the chains, the back and the other side, we have 208 stitches. And now we will continue to work half double crochet rows for a total of 18 rows for the section for size small, and then come on back. So now that we have worked all the way across all these 208 stitches for 18 rows, it's now time for us only to work on the right side panel. This way we are leaving an opening for the neck to come back later. So I've gone ahead and marked 98 stitches from the right side. You don't have to mark it if you don't want to. I just like to know when I'm gonna stop. So I'll, I'll continue in the half double crochet stitches, working only 98 stitches, then turning and working back. And we'll do this um, for the 98 stitches for a total of 22 rows. Now, after working the 98 stitches for a total of 22 rows, now it's time for us to go back and work the front panel section without the arms. So we've added the arms there. Now we're gonna take off the arms and this will be the right front panel before the mosaic work. So what we will do on this side is we'll fasten off and rejoin our yarn. So we will want to count over 64 stitches, rejoin our yarn, and then work the remaining 34 stitches as half double crochet. Now we will work this section of these 34 stitches for a total of 12 rows, which is the same we worked on that back panel initially before we added the arms. So we're just matching whatever you put on the back panel before adding the arms. So if you've lengthened or shortened that, you're doing the same amount of rows now for this front panel portion, which for this size is 34 stitches for 12 rows. Now, after we are done working this right side, it's time to come back and finish this left side. So we'll be working across the arms for this first portion. And then we're gonna do the same thing we did with the right side is we'll work, we'll take the arms out and work the front panel of the left side. So we're gonna skip 16 stitches in the middle. So you just wanna count over 16 stitches from the last one worked, attach your yarn and work the 98 stitches for 22 rows. And we're just gonna mimic what we did on this other side here. After working those 98 stitches for 22 rows, we will go ahead and only work um, 34 stitches for 12 rows. You won't have to fasten off on this side like we did over here because it works out to where we'll be right it, on this side of the work when it comes time to work the front panel. So we can just turn and work those 34 stitches for 12 rows. So now we have this panel done, which matches this other panel, and it's time for us to do some seaming. So if we fold this over in a, the um, horizontal way. We have our arms out here to the side. I'm going to scooch this so we can see all the way across. I'm going to fold it in half and we're going to be seaming from the bottom here up the side and across the arm. And we're going to do on that on each side. So each side, we're just seaming from the bottom part of our, our current body and then across the arms. And then you'll see that this is well, it kind of looks like a crop top, honestly. It looks like a, a crop cardigan. But after we do the seaming on the sides and the arms, we'll be able to go ahead and start doing our work down here, which is going to be the mosaic crochet. Now that we have our sides seamed, it's time for us to work all the way around the bottom of this cardigan. 
We'll be working this mosaic part as one piece and we'll start by doing our first two rows in single crochet stitches. So we're going to start by counting this as row one of the mosaic work and we'll be single crocheting row one all the way across the bottom of this cardigan and then we're going to turn and single crochet another row all the way back around on the other side. Now before we start on row three, I want to note that I am changing colors from what I said in the supply list. I decided to go with this lighter one. I think the tones will pull nicely from each other, but I also want to talk about the chart before we jump into row three. Now when it comes to this mosaic chart, we're going to be working it from bottom to top and from right to left. Each row will be worked two times because we have an odd row and an even row for each line on here from the bottom to the top. Now the very first square at the beginning of each row will indicate which color you're going to be working for those two rows from right to left for the odd row and then from left to right for the even row. So that way you'll know which yarn to pick up and work for that row based on the very first square block in that row. Now the X's on this chart indicate where you're going to work a mosaic double crochet stitch. If it doesn't have an X, it might either be chained or single crocheted based on the written instructions. This crochet chart will be a great guide to use along with the written pattern. I also have a full tutorial making a smaller sample on mosaic crochet on my blog. If this is the first time you've ever done mosaic crochet, I suggest following that blog and doing that short sample project. Now here we are ready to work row three. Now for row three, we're going to start with our color B. So I'm going to back this up just a little bit to my last stitch. And before completing this stitch, I'll grab my color B and I'm going to yarn over and finish this stitch with the color B. That way I'm ready and set up to work row three with this new color. I can go ahead and let my main color sit. I'm going to carry it up the side. It won't be noticeable later. So I'm just going to let that sit for now and I'll come back to it later. We're going to start row B with doing a single crochet into the very first stitch of the row. And then we will be doing a chain four. We're going to chain four and then skip the next four stitches. After skipping four stitches, we're going to single crochet in the next stitch after we skipped four. And then we are going to do a chain three and skip three. And then we're going to be doing our repeat. So really what this does is it creates a long chain space in between. So now I'm going to chain four and skip four and then single crochet into the next. The way this chart reads is the repeat will be a chain four, skip four, single crochet one, chain three, skip three. But when we're working that repeat all at once, you'll end up having chain spaces that are skipping seven stitches. So we're going to re repeat that all the way across until we get to the last stitch in this row. Now, as you might notice, we're creating some really long spaces of chain stitches. For an adult, I don't really mind leaving these on the inside of the garment. It's not an issue. But if you were making this for a baby, sometimes working over these are safer for not getting anything stuck or a choking hazard. Now that we are at the last stitch in this row, we're going to go ahead and do a single crochet stitch. And now it's time for us to work row two, which means we're going to be turning our work and then we're going to be working back across this. We will be single crocheting into every single crochet stitch or when we're working other even rows, it might be a double crochet stitch. And then we're going to chain any chains and skip them. So we're working kind of what we did before where we're going to do a single crochet stitch into any stitch and we're going to chain and skip any chains. This is what we will do on all of the even rows when we're working back across. So it's just mimicking kind of what we did on the row below by working a single crochet into each stitch that's there, whether it be single crochet or mosaic double crochet, 
and then chaining and skipping any chain spaces. Now that we are at the last stitch in the row, we're going to single crochet in the last stitch, but we're going to be switching back to our main color, our color A. So we're going to yarn over and pull that through our last stitch so that we're set up and ready. Now when it comes to working row five, with the color A, we're going to do a single crochet into this very first stitch. And then for the next four stitches, we're going to be working mosaic double crochets. What this means is we're going to be working in front of those chain stitches and we're going to be working on the previous row in this color. So we're going to be doing the double crochet stitches in front of all of those chain stitches for this row. That's what makes this a mosaic double crochet is just the way that it's worked in front of those chains. Then when we get to our single crochet stitch, we're going to do a single crochet for one. Then we're going to mosaic double crochet into the next three stitches. Now sometimes with our main color on some rows, we also will be chaining and skipping some of our color B. But for this row, we're just doing a little pop of color that comes through and this is what starts the design. This is how we have that look of color work coming through, even though we're only working one color at a time per row. So we'll complete this repeat across row five where we're doing four uh, mosaic double crochets, single crochet one, and then mosaic double crochet for three. Now that we are at the last stitch of this row, we'll single crochet and then turn our work. And we'll be working back across this as we did with row four with any even row. So we'll start by doing a single crochet into the first stitch and then because this row was worked without any chain spaces, we're simply going to single crochet into each stitch across. Now, when it comes to row seven, we've changed back to our color B and we're going to do a single crochet in the first stitch and then chain two and skip two. And then we will be doing a single crochet, chain one, skip one, three times. So now we're really getting into a lot more chain spaces happening where this design will really come together. So we'll just do that repeat all the way across and then single crochet in the last stitch. And this is what we will be doing for the remaining of the mosaic work. We're just gonna keep working in the pattern there, following the chart or the written instructions. And if you've never done mosaic before, please jump over to the blog and learn how to do that so that this is really simple for you to do. Now that we have this mosaic portion completed and we've worked through all those rows, we have the bottom portion of our color work done so we can fasten off this color that we were using for this mosaic section and the rest of the cardigan will be worked in our main A color and we're going to be working on ribbing here. I'm not going to change hook sizes because I don't really want the bottom of my cardigan to pull in too much so I'm keeping with the same crochet hook. Now this ribbing will be a join as you go ribbing. We're going to start by working some chains and then we will be working in rows but we'll be joining along the bottom of this cardigan as we work and working across the bottom. So what we will do is we will start by chaining 12. Now this last chain is my turning chain so I'm simply going to tighten that down a little bit and starting in the second chain from the hook we're going to do a single crochet stitch and we're going to single crochet into the remaining across, which means we have a total of 11 stitches and 11 stitches is what I'll be working for this ribbing. If you would like to make this longer or shorter for the bottom of the cardigan ribbing, feel free to add more chains before um, starting to work across them or fewer chains to adjust the width of the ribbing. Now that we've worked down all 11 stitches, we're going to slip stitch into the next two stitches from the bottom of this cardigan. So we've slip stitched two stitches and now we're going to turn our work 
and skip the two slip stitches we just did and working in the back loop only single crochet across now i want to show you a tip when we get to the very last stitch on this bottom edge here to have it be a bit more clean so i'm single crocheting in the back loop only of all 11 stitches across And now as I come to this last stitch, instead of working this um, one that will be the bottom edge of the cardigan through the back loop only, if we work it as a regular single crochet working through both loops, it will create a straighter edge along the bottom. Then we can turn our work, chain one and tighten that down. And then we will simply work the first stitch through the both loops and the remaining stitches in the back loop only and our stitch count for the rib ribbing will remain at 11 stitches for every single row. And we'll be repeating those last two rows all the way along the bottom edge of this cardigan. So just to recap, as I get through these ribbing stitches, working the back loop only, I get to the bottom edge where I will slip stitch into the next two stitches, turn my work, skip the two slip stitches and in the back loop only single crochet across until the last stitch and the last stitch we will single crochet through both loops and then once again when we get to the end of this row we will turn our work chain one i like to tighten down that chain a bit single crochet through both loops of the first stitch and then working in the back loop only single crochet across for 11. so we're just repeating those two rows again and again and it builds our ribbing up across the bottom of here in rows joining as we go so work all the way until you get to the other edge of the bottom of the cardigan and then we will come on back so now that we have worked the ribbing all along the bottom of this cardigan, it's time for us to work it around that front opening. And fortunate for us, we do end the bottom ribbing at the front bottom right corner of this opening. So all we have to do is simply turn our work and we'll be working up and around this opening. So we'll work up towards the neck, around the neck and back down the other side. We will be doing the same thickness of ribbing for the front. If you want to adjust that, you can do so with these starting chains. So we are going to start working in rows across this portion of the cardigan the same way we did here, which means we will need to start with a chain 12. I like to tighten down that last chain and then single crochet in the next 11 chains. And then we will continue to work the same way we did before where we're going to slip stitch two stitches from the front opening of this cardigan. We're going to turn our work, skip those two slip stitches and working in the back loop only. We will single crochet across until the last stitch where we will single crochet through both the loops. So this is exactly the same um, way that we did this ribbing here. You can see we're just turning and building it and working it all the way up the front. Now when you get to this mosaic part, we will be working one row per row, if that makes sense. So we will be working these stitches into the side of here. So I'm going to work this first part where it's very evident which stitch I'll be working into until we get to this part. And then I'm going to come back and show you. Now, the wonderful thing about working mosaic when it comes to doing this ribbing along the front is every single row that we started here, we started with a single crochet stitch in the color that we were going to be working. And that will help us when we're working the ribbing up the front of this, we will want to slip stitch one stitch per row. So you're simply going to be looking at the one stitch that you did in single crochet at the beginning of each row. 
you're going to slip stitch in those two stitches from the front opening and then turn and skip the two slip stitches and then work in the back loop only. So you will be working one slip stitch from the front opening, um, one stitch per row on the front opening. So it will be one slip stitch, then the next slip stitch in the next row, and you'll be working the ribbing that way. So you're just going to count one row as, as one stitch and slip stitch two rows every single time you are grabbing those stitches from the front opening and it will look quite nice. So we'll be working this ribbing all the way around the front. It's, it is quite a bit of work, but grab a movie. It can be really relaxing to do, and we'll just be making it the same thickness all the way around the front of this cardigan. So now that we've worked our ribbing all the way around the front center, and we went up and around the neck, and we worked our way back down, I fastened off my yarn, and the only thing we have left now is to do the ribbing on the sleeves. And I've gone ahead and done one side so you can see what we'll, we will be doing, and then we'll do this one. I'll show you how to do it on camera. So notice how much I am bringing in this cuff compared to where I started. Now when it comes to your wrist size, everyone can be different. This is quite stretchy. But I went down to a four millimeter hook. If you want to, you can use a 4.5. But we're going to be working around this edge, doing the ribbing in the same way we did here, except for when we're grabbing stitches, we'll be working that a little bit different in how many slip stitches from the edge we're grabbing um, per row. And that's what makes the difference in bringing this down. I really love these cute puff sleeves. They're quite easy to do and they're really fun to make. So let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to do when it comes to the sleeve is we're going to find the seam that is on the bottom. So we want to go ahead and join wherever that seam is from under the arm across. That's where we want to join our yarn just so that we keep the seam on the underneath side as well when we're making this ribbing. I'm going to start with chaining 12. This is the same count we did on the ribbing on the bottom and the front of this cardigan. I'll tighten down that last chain, and just like we've seen before, we will single crochet into each chain stitch across for a total of 11 stitches. And now here's where the difference is when it comes to this ribbing. We will be slip stitching two slip stitches per three rows. So yeah, that's quite a distance here. So usually what I like to do is slip stitch into the first row, skip the second and slip stitch into the third row. So that is two slip stitches per three rows. And that is what will pull this in to be um, that, that puffy sleeve look. So now I'm going to turn and skip those two slip stitches. And through the back loop only, we will single crochet into each stitch across until we get to the very last stitch and then the last stitch we will single crochet into both loops. And next we will turn our work and we're going to be doing this again and again um, all the way around. But I want to note when you're doing this, it can easily be adjusted to be tighter or looser when it comes to the cuff. So you could either go to a 4.5 millimeter hook to do this if you feel like going down to a 4 millimeter hook is just too small. And then you can also adjust in how many stitches you're picking up along this edge. So if you feel like it's going to be too tight, go ahead and do a couple of these where you're doing one stitch per edge and then um, keep on going. That'll give it a bit more space. Or you can even use your H hook as well if you want a little bit of a looser cuff if you don't want it too tight. And you can also stick your arm through the sleeve, kind of hold the cuff as you go to see how far it's fitting around your wrist to see if you like it. But once again, I'm down here. I actually worked along this row for the last time. So now I'm going to be working two slip stitches across these three um, rows. So I'll start with my first row and then my last row. So that's two slip stitches across three rows. That's what will really, really pinch this in to be tight 
like our other arm here. Notice how this really goes from wide to thin, and this is what makes it do so, is the way that we're slip stitching around this edge. So continue to work that all the way around, and then come on back and I'll show you how to join your first edge with the final edge. So now that we've worked all the way around the edge of this, we are going to go ahead and join. And I've already done a chain one. And what we will do to join these edges together is we will start by placing our hook into the first stitch and then grabbing the loop of the first stitch from the very first row that we did, those chain stitches. Then we're going to yarn over and slip stitch yarn over and slip stitch everything together. And now we're going to work down this the same way we did before working through the back loop only, but also grabbing that loop from the stitch from the first row and slip stitching those together. So back loop only, grab the loop from the first row and slip stitch together and repeat that all the way down. After slip stitching all those together, you can go ahead and fasten it off and then weave in your end. Of course, not only is this cardigan fun to make, it is fun to wear. Um, I did like to do a light blocking on these because it's like ironing your clothes. It's a really good idea just to do a light blocking. You can do it on top of your bed. You can do, just spray it and leave it or do a light steam blocking and it really makes everything look nice. It's like ironing your clothes before you wear them. I really hope you've enjoyed this color work cardigan project. It's becoming one of my favorites. I really love this design. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and come back for more fun projects soon.